Last week we started the meeting and we talked about what we can eat that's healthy. And by the way, I'm Ellen McCauley at Pray It Up in Syracuse, New York. We talked about some of the things we could eat. We talked about coming to the meeting every week. But the most important thing, and it even mentioned it in the Bible verse tonight, we can say, oh, I want to lose weight. I want to get healthy. Those are my words. Then the next day I'm like, donuts? Whoa, I'll take a couple of them. Those are my deeds. What we need to do is put them together so that our words match our deeds. So in order to do that, what are we going to have to do? Work? Anything worth doing or worth achieving is going to take work. Now, you might say, well, not winning the lottery. That's pretty easy. I don't know about you, but I anybody won a million dollars on the lottery? Raise your hand. I haven't. Everything else is work. In order to do this work, we need to change. We can't, as I said at the end of Pray It Off last week, eat like a pig and drink like a fish. We can't. We need to change. I love this. Our dilemma is that we hate change and love it at the same time. What we really want is for things to remain the same but get better. Don't we? Don't we want to sit in our lazy boy at home going, why don't I weigh 150? We want to wish ourselves healthy. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen. So there's some key factors that are crucial for long-term weight loss success. you got to want it. You have to want to lose weight more than you want the donut. You have to say to yourself, I want to lose weight, keep it off, and be healthy. Several people this week lost three, four pounds, and they had a piece of cake. They had, they had maybe a beer. They went out to a restaurant and had an extra. But that was the exception, not the rule. That's why I don't tell people to starve themselves. But where we are many times is we're having cake every day. We're having extras every day. You have to want to make the change. You have to say it's worth the effort. And you've got to be realistic. I think we got a pretty realistic group this time. No one came in here this week and went, well, I didn't lose 20 pounds the first week. I'm quitting. <laughs> People are pretty realistic. Also, we need to value what we've achieved rather than dwelling on your dream weight. If I stand here and said, but in 1982, I was at my goal weight, well, is it 1982, everybody? I think I fast forwarded. What good is it going to do for me worrying about what I weighed in 1982? Because it's 2014. You own it, you're here, you're now. And you got to plan your regular snacks, meals. Today, I, uh, Everyone eats all day at work. That's all they do. People just eat. I'm amazed. Eat, eat, eat. So this one young lady said, oh, I cut up some sweet peppers. And she had these slivers of sweet peppers. And I'm like, she goes, you want a couple? I'm like, yeah. They were delicious. So I'm thinking, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a sweet pepper, slot, you know, cut it, cut it up. I didn't feel one bit guilty. Is anyone going to make me feel guilty about snacking on slices of sweet peppers? It is a perfect thing. But what I'm saying is, if you're worrying about what you're going to have for your snacks and you're not planning ahead, then you might not have the best one. And you have to be flexible. That's a lot of things we do. We have these all or nothing thinking. We go and we're good, 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 good. Friday night, you have pizza. And you go, that's it. Blew it. I'm quitting. Or I might as well have 20 beers with that pizza since I'm having pizza. You get back on the saddle the next day. And here's something we're going to talk about at length. Emotional problems that make us turn to food. There was a day when, you know, just knowing that one of my kids was getting on a plane, or the way I dealt with it was, you know, I'd have some beers, and I'd watch that, you know, they have that stuff on the computer where you can see the plane moving <laughs> across the screen. And I'm like, okay, it's still in the air. <laughs> They're still good. Bob, give me another beer. Okay, everything's still good. And now I say, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Also, we need to only check our weight once a week at Pray It Off. I want to thank everyone in this room. 
because no one told me tonight what they weighed buck naked at five o'clock this morning. And I thank you for that. I thank you from the bottom of my heart because it is what it is and it's here. If your weight is rising, then take action before it rises by more than two pounds. This is so key. If you get to your goal, and let's say your goal is 175, and you were 250, wow, you did great. Then you say to yourself, I'm going to give myself 175 to 180. You go to 182, and then you go, hold the horses. Or even if you go to 180, that's where we also get in trouble. We start gaining, gaining, and the next thing you know, you know, we've gained too much back. But why don't we change? We're so good at talking about other people, aren't we? You see someone walk in church and you're like, whoa, why aren't they in prayer? Oh, they really need to lose weight. We're so good at looking at them. If my husband, not mine, because everyone knows that my husband's perfect, at least that's what everyone in the group thinks. But if you say, if my husband only supported me, if he only was encouraging, I would lose the weight. But he buys me donuts, he buys me candy, it's all his fault. We think that everybody else, we can find all the fault. Maybe we're the difficult people we need to change. Maybe we could just concentrate on changing ourselves, because guess what? That's all we can change, is ourselves. And we need to also get rid of that programming. There's many people here, myself to a little extent, who says, am I ever going to get to my goal weight? I never did before. I always gained the weight back. I was in Weight Watchers. I did Nutrisystem. I did this. Maybe I won't. See, we have that thinking. Maybe I won't. Why is this any different? We need to be self-aware and understand that this is different this time. God is our co-pilot. And here's big, big, big. What is the payoff? That's what we have to change about ourselves. Is the payoff from the six-pack of beer and the Subway sub with everything on it worth it. At the time it is. Oh, that sub's so good. And those beer, whoo. And then we're like, Thursday night, weigh in, pray it off, blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes. What's the payoff? And if you say to yourself, maybe I'll have a half a turkey sub and one beer. We have to reel ourselves in. We have to find out that the candy bar payoff maybe last a minute, five minutes. Is it worth it? That's what we have to decide for ourselves. And you know, we have to change ourselves first. And in order to do that, we have to make ourselves a priority. A couple of people aren't here tonight, and I'm going to call them, because they left me messages that said, you know, my, my daughter, you know, she, you know, never gets a chance, you know, to go out to dinner, and she got an offer, so I'm going to babysit the kids. Really? I think that's great. Your poor daughter doesn't get to go to dinner. This meeting's about us. I can see this where you go, oh, I can appreciate that, that is so awesome, but I'm sorry. I have a commitment. Every Thursday night, I made a commitment to go to Pray It Off at 6 o'clock. I wish I could, but I can't. Why can't we say no? Why can't we? And you know what you do? You train people. My husband's got a very busy construction job, and he's out of town. He goes to Cortland. He goes here. He goes there. And the owner of the company goes, oh, Bob, on Thursday, maybe you can go to Utica. No, wait a minute. That's your meeting night. No, we'll keep you in town. You train people. You train your kids to say, oh, Thursday, oh, that's right, Mom, Dad, that's your meeting. And it might take a little time, but the payoff is that we're here. Kevin, I'm going to embarrass you a little bit because he's lost so much weight and kept it off over at Table 3. And you know what he said to me tonight? It's coming to this meeting. It's coming every week. And if you don't come, you won't change. And also, self-awareness is the, is the key to change. You know, one of the things Dr. Phil always likes to say is, how's that working for you? How's that working for you? How's eating the pizza and the beers and the candy, how's it working for you? If it was working for us, we wouldn't be here every week going, I want to lose weight. Also, we have to try and change things a little at a time. Some people go, okay. Ellen's right. I, I got to change. Okay, tomorrow I'm going to run a marathon, 26 miles, and I am going to never have cake, cookies, ice cream, beer, cake, nothing ever again. What you say is for 21 days, 
I'm going to try and exercise two hours a week. I'm going to try to not have any pizza. <laughs> you said 21 days? 21 days. Because believe it or not, and this is, maybe the new people don't know this, but I've said it a few times to the more seasoned people here. If you do not have pizza for 21 days, guess what? You won't die. <laughs> they won't go. I'd like to give a little eulogy for this person. <sighs> what they did was they didn't have pizza. Days. Now they're gone. <laughs> no, that will not happen. Okay, Bob. Uh, We're going to stop right there.